The Pentagon building was built in the early 40s on a site called Hell's Swamp, the Arlington Wasteland. The idea for the construction of the Pentagon of gigantic proportions came to the minds of secret officials and the agencies that directed U.S. foreign relations. The building itself has unique architectural features that have attracted researchers for decades. The world's media, including the most influential, such as the BBC, report that the Pentagon's special services are trying hard to keep information about their work from getting out and are trying to protect the secrets of the Pentagon by literally buying up and destroying thousands of copies of books that expose the agency's activities. Such was the case with a former U.S. Army officer who served in Afghanistan and began to tell the truth in his memoirs. The series of terrorist attacks that occurred on September 11, 2001 is also a source of much mystery. One of the targets at that time was the American Mega Pentagon. What secrets do Pentagon bosses want to hide? What was behind the attack on the building during the largest terrorist attack in human history? And why do some researchers claim that most of the Pentagon's structures are hidden underground? Today, we are going to tell you about one of the most protected places on the planet, the U.S. Department of Defense's unapproachable fortress. Books about the Pentagon were indeed being destroyed in print runs. Some of them had already been printed, so the U.S. intelligence services held secret events during which they bought back thousands of copies before they even made it to the store shelves. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaffer, in his book, hit where it hurts the Pentagon the most, and he paid the price for it. Here's what April Cunningham, a lieutenant colonel and agency spokesman, had to say in an excuse. The Department of Defense decided to purchase the first printing of the book because it contains information that could be detrimental to national security. They didn't even hide their actions and 9,500 copies of the book were destroyed. It was 2010 and the Inquisition and the burning of literature was still being practiced. By the way, something similar was happening in Germany in the 1930s, which was going crazy. To brighten up the picture for the public and to give the appearance of freedom of speech, Schaffer was allowed to publish a second edition of the book. But in fact, they removed individual words, names, and entire paragraphs from 299 pages. It all started when the U.S. government decided to put the entire leadership of the U.S. Department of Defense in one place. At first, the plans seemed too ambitious. The Mega Pentagon was supposed to hold 26,000 employees on a scale comparable to a small city. And according to the closed technical documentation, the facility was supposed to hold up to 40,000 people. It was also planned to give the employees 10,000 personal and company park slots. In Europe at the time, the flames of World War II were heating up and the superpowers were conserving resources. But the Americans were persistent in their intentions. The very idea of keeping the entire military leadership of the country under the roof of one building seems unreasonable. Experts who study the issue argue that during the Cold War, the Pentagon was even nicknamed the epicenter. It was assumed that if a nuclear war with the Soviet Union did break out, the first missiles would hit the Pentagon. And if we take into account the fact that the facility was built during the World War, the logic of American generals would seem to limp even more. Certainly, the presence of secret bunkers makes it possible to shelter from bombing, but what about the physical capture of the building? Why should the lives of the entire senior officer course be risked at once? There is no clear answer to these questions, but it is likely that U.S. leaders have some data that allow them to accept such a decision. They certainly were not fools. As soon as the President of the United States gave the go-ahead, the best architects set about finding the best location. The residents say that in the Arlington area, the American military department bosses liked that the plot of land was outlined with five roads and some of them were crossed at an angle of 108 degrees. Masters of geometry for some reason desired to build a five-sided polygon, which the ancient Greeks also called the Pentagon. The territory itself was marshy and besides, the Arlington Cemetery was situated nearby. However, it did not affect the decision to build it in another location. The choice was agreed upon at the very top. Judging from the original design, the building fit perfectly into the transportation infrastructure, but the government soon decided that if the Pentagon will be built in this place, it would block the view of Washington. That's why right on the eve of the construction, the work was postponed, but the unique design was retained unchanged. It is said that Roosevelt himself, at his wife's request, ordered the Pentagon moved half a mile for aesthetic purposes. We can only guess the real reason for this decision. The object was built in record time in two years, the largest office building in the world, belonging to one owner, was surrendered. That owner was the U.S. Department of Defense. The five fetichades of the building overlook the shopping malls, the river, its own subway station, parking, and a special helipad. If you believe the official data, the U.S. Department of Defense headquarters has five floors above ground, and two more are hidden underground. But researchers have a lot of questions about the underground part of the building, and we will return to this. The ramified network of tunnels and corridors is amazing. Each floor consists of five pentagon-shaped rings and 11 communicating corridors. 
Thanks to the unique layout, it takes only 7 minutes to get from one point of the building to any other. This ergonomics is related to the properties of the geometric figure itself. The total length of the corridors exceeds 28 kilometers and the area of just the top 5 floors is more than 600,000 square meters. It is incredibly huge. The Pentagon's total office space is almost twice as much as the Empire State Building. It is interesting that in the early 40s when erecting the structure, the architects made twice as many toilets as required separately for whites and separately for blacks. Of course, this was not done to increase comfort, but for other, less well-intentioned reasons. However, they never got around to putting signs on the doors. They say that Franklin Roosevelt personally intervened. Researchers wonder why the building had to be shaped like this. The diagonals of the pentagon form a pentagram and the intersection points of the diagonals in a regular pentagon are the points of the golden ratio. The pentagon as though consists of an infinite number of smaller pentagons which are formed by intersection points of diagonals. By the way, the correct pentagon with the pentagram enclosed in it is a symbol of the sacral Pythagoras union. Some researchers suggest that the pentagon is only a visible part of the dodecahedron hidden underground. Plato, by the way, considered this geometric body ideal. Not everyone in the USA is happy with the pentagon policy. In October 1967, the citizens of the United States held a large-scale protest against the Vietnam War called the March on the Pentagon. The number of participants exceeded 100,000. Demonstrators first rallied at the Lincoln Memorial and then marched toward the headquarters of the U.S. Department of Defense. The hordes of people who were not in the best of spirits terrorized the staff generals and the protesters were met by police and National Guard troops. September 11, 2001 is inextricably linked to the history of the Pentagon. According to official records, at 9.37 a.m. on that day, the victims of the attack were 125 Pentagon employees and 64 passengers of the airliner. Part of the building collapsed, 125 Pentagon employees and 64 passengers of the airliner became victims of the attack. The Pentagon and the Navy command, a Boeing passenger jet crashed into the building. Part of the structure collapsed, the victims of the attack were 125 Pentagon employees and 64 passengers of the airliner. President George W. Bush gave a speech after these events in which he said that the wounds of this building will not be forgotten. What exactly did he mean by that revenge on terrorists or something else? It is still a mystery. There is a theory that the events of September 11 were an operation of the intelligence services to strengthen the powers of the state security forces. The fight against terrorism was only a pretext. Relatively free up to that point, American society was instantly jammed in the grip of the new laws. The U.S. government has expanded dramatically in terms of searches, use of weapons, and other areas directly affecting the basic constitutional rights of U.S. citizens. Researchers who hold this point of view argue that the damage to the building was too small, given that it was ran by a 100-ton vessel traveling at 300 kilometers per hour. It is also suspicious that this particular wing of the Pentagon was undergoing redevelopment at the time of the impact, and that most of its staff had been moved to other offices. Such versions are popular among millions of people in the United States, but the White House could not convince them otherwise. Twenty years after the tragedy, more than 50% of Americans continue to believe that the government has not revealed the whole truth about the attacks. According to the official information, all the wreckage of the Boeing that crashed into the Pentagon, except for the black box, burned in the fire. Purely theoretically, this could be true. The black box records prove that the plane was hijacked by terrorists. However, many serious researchers claim that it was not an airplane that hit the building, but a missile of the U.S. Armed Forces. By the way, what version of the events of September 11 do you hold? Write in the comments. One of the major improvements to the Pentagon after the disaster was the complete renovation of the builder's windows, replacing them with armored ones. It is said that the outer walls were reinforced and made explosion-proof. The elevators leading to the subway stations were also closed. General security measures have also been greatly increased. Secret Pentagon data periodically leaks onto the web. Sometimes WikiLeaks is not needed and Russian hackers had nothing to do with it either. As the Washington Post reported, information about secret U.S. facilities appeared on an interactive map displaying the activity of fitness tracker users. One of particular interest was activity in war zones in the Middle East, Africa, and Afghanistan. Jiving routes with striking accuracy coincided with the coordinates of U.S. military bases. The Pentagon promised taxpayers to figure out the situation. However, this was only followed by orders to subordinates to be more careful with their gadgets. The big scandal happened in 2008 when Google posted on its maps detailed panoramas of the military base in Texas. The Pentagon at the time took advantage of his favorite tactic and announced that the information posed a potential threat to national security, which was followed by a ban on Google's panoramic surveys and garrisons. Satellite maps are a headache for the Pentagon. However, secrets are revealed far more often than the U.S. military bosses would like. 
One of the most interesting finds on the web is a secret U.S. Air Base Yucca Lake, Nevada. The base was declassified in 2011 just because of map service. The funny thing is that because of the abundance of search engines to remove information, the non-synchronously exists, and the same objects can be plastered on one map and at the same time remain on the other. Moreover, any attentive person who has studied the maps can identify the locations that have been plastered over and see how these locations look in other services. The Pentagon's patches of retouching seem to tell users. There's a reason it's smudged here, you should take a look at this place. Intelligence agencies in other countries, such as China, do not sleep and studied everything a long time ago. And the German media reported that the hackers got access to the U.S. Department of Defense personnel and classified agency information. The Pentagon claims that their commercial suppliers' networks were hacked. We are talking about the hacking of data relating to the travel of defense officials. Leap personal data and credit card information of Pentagon employees. About 30,000 employees have been declassified. So in terms of cybersecurity, not everything is going so well for the American defense monster. The media have also reported blatant corruption cases. In 2019, a scandal erupted in the U.S. over billions of American taxpayer dollars wasted in Afghanistan. For a decade and a half, various U.S. government agencies have been building unused or unmaintained infrastructure at a crazy $2.5 billion. The Pentagon plays the most prominent role in the mismanagement of the budget. Inspectors found that nearly 30% of the assets were unused, abandoned, or destroyed. For example, the academy built for female police officers never functioned because of the Afghan government's moratorium on training women. 16 transport planes for the Afghan military, valued at $486 million, were for various reasons destroyed and sought off for scrap and the purpose-built school was never taught due to the disgusting quality of the electrical equipment. And there are dozens of such examples. Oversight agencies continually find irregularities in contracts for the U.S. armed forces. For example, the Pacific Fleet routinely forgets to specify which foreign contractors it pays for work. In Japan, 600 people are not counted, and in South Korea, the number of people actually hired exceeds the number on paper by 10 times. But as long as the U.S. printing press is working properly, the U.S. government can safely turn a blind eye to such trifles, because there will be no punishment for that. We'll stop here, because we could talk about the mysteries of the Pentagon for hours. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, rate the video fairly, and write what you think about it all. See you in future episodes on our channel.